Welcome to October. It's officially autumn now that the equinox has passed and there are so many things that we can explore in nature this month. Now my name's Rachel. I work with the Twinkle Home Ed team and last month you learned that you maybe can't trust me that much. I'm going to tell you some information. Again, just like last time, some of it is completely and utterly true. Other bits are very, very, very false. So all you need to do is listen, pause the video if you need to and decide whether you think I am telling the truth or whether it's fake news. Is it fact or is it fake? Let's see. During October, leaves start to change colour. Why does that happen? Well, it's a bit like putting on sunscreen. If you don't do that during the summer, your skin gets a little bit red and pink and then maybe gets brown or gets a darker brown or you get freckles like me. Well, that's what happens to leaves. Different leaves have different SPF factors in them and that will decide what colour they're going to change in October. Is that fact or is it fake? It's fake! <laughs> Yep, that's fake. And if you want to know why leaves really change colour, then have a look at this video I've linked in above. During October, ponds can sometimes start releasing some very stinky smells. They almost smell like rotten eggs and they can even produce toxic gases. Is that fact or is it fake? It's fact! It's true. During autumn, leaves fall on top of the pond and it stops sunlight getting in so the plants inside can't produce oxygen. And it also means that that kind of rotting vegetation sinks to the bottom of the pond and starts to, to produce some gases, which can be toxic. So if you've got a stinky pond, definitely get some help from a grown-up to clear the leaves off the top. During October, you're probably going to see lots of busy squirrels collecting <coughs> acorns ready for their hibernation. So you will see squirrels collecting lots of nuts and seeds, but they don't hibernate. In fact, most animals don't hibernate. They just adapt during the cold weather. So they'll try and conserve their energy by running around less and they'll have lots of stores of food ready for when that gets a bit sparse. Speaking of squirrels, let's do a craft together. If your family is like mine, you love collecting leaves and sorting them out, well now turn them into a craft. I know this looks easy, but that gives you time to think about the shapes, the colours, the textures, the way you might layer things or shade them. And once you've done that, you've got your squirrels. During October, why not try and look out for these three things? darkness it's going to get a lot darker now you've probably noticed that already maybe you don't need the blackout curtains to stop the light coming in when you're in bed at night maybe in the morning you're having to turn the light on as you go downstairs it's definitely getting darker and of course you already know that that's because of the way that the earth is tilted it's on a tilt of about 23 degrees and depending on whether you're leaning towards the sun or away from the sun as we orbit round the sun well, that changes how much light you're going to get and it's going to get darker and darker until winter solstice. Maybe you could keep a little record of sunrises and sunsets and then you'll be able to spot exactly when it starts to get brighter again. It seems a bit strange talking about darkness when right now I'm having to shield myself from the bright light in the sky. Obviously, there's still going to be light around in October and that's what the second thing is that I want you to focus on, light. You'll notice a lot of people clinging on to bits of light around them. Not literally, not literally grabbing those candles, but kind of looking for opportunities to bring light into their life. It could be lighting candles in the evening. It could be pumpkins where you carve them out and you put your candle in the middle of them. We've got a lantern festival coming up where everyone's going to parade through the dark park carrying lanterns that they've made. Diwali's coming up as well and that's a festival of lights. Why do you think that at this time of year, so many people are celebrating light? That would be a great place to pause and chat to each other about that. Why, during October, do we have so many festivals to do with light? In between the darkest of dark and the lightest of light are a whole rainbow of different colours. And that's a third thing that I want you to keep an eye out for different colours that you see in October. But look, you were getting on a bit now. You've been doing this nature exploration for a while. So I want you to just pick one colour 
and see how many different shades of that colour you can find. We went on a nature walk to do this and it's really interesting to see how many different shades you can even see in one leaf. So have a look and see what you can find. October is also Black History Month and it's really important to recognise that even though we feel like nature is free for everyone, there are actually a lot of barriers to stop different communities from being able to explore nature. Black communities have often in the past and sometimes today been prevented from exploring nature or working to protect it. However, there's some really important black explorers that I'd like you to learn about. Here's one I'm going to tell you about now. Wangaira Matai was born in Kenya in 1940 and she was the first African woman to get the Nobel Peace Prize. One reason she got it is because she has helped plant 50 million trees around Africa. She also helped a lot of women do that so that they could support their community. Thank you so much for joining us this month. I'm about to get this lot home for some lunch, but I hope you have a great month exploring.